Hello, good morning. So uh, today I'm going to discuss about uh, some of the, the classical ciphers we had uh, in, in in our history. So this is actually uh, to give you some uh, intuition about how the uh, ciphers uh, they developed and uh, how these ideas came to the modern cryptology and also the, how these uh, crypt analysis have been developed. So the topic is uh, introduction to symmetric ciphers. Actually, uh, even now we are using symmetric uh, cryptographic algorithms. So this is historical aspects about those things. So when we have symmetric ciphers, so sym symmetric cryptography, uh, the, the main thing is uh, like they are also known as uh, secret key ciphers. The encryption and decryption keys are only known to the sender and the receiver. So this is the the the, the main characteristic of this symmetric key ciphers or symmetric key cryptography. And essentially, this requires a channel, a secure channel for transmission of the secret key. Perhaps uh, sender and receiver can meet in person and uh, exchange the secret key, or uh, using a trusted messenger, they can physically send the uh, secret key likewise some way to securely transmit uh, the secret key between the sender and the receiver and then only uh, they can use that to encrypt and decrypt the messages the the, the the entire security of the system depends on the security of the secret key because the secret key is used to encrypt as well as decryption so these are the notations we use uh, throughout this lecture and maybe uh, throughout our course. We use E for the encryption function or encryption algorithm, D uh, for the decryption algorithm, M for the plain message, the plain text or the message, and C is the encryption or the, 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 the encrypted message, but that means the cipher text or cryptogram. Historically, we say cryptogram, but in modern days, we say it is a uh, cipher text. The encrypted message and ke is the encryption key kd is the decryption key in the symmetric key cryptography ke equals kd so this is the encryption encryption means uh, we use the encryption algorithm e that's a function parameters to the function is uh, ke and m m is the plain message or the plain text ke is the encryption key which will give the c the cipher text and the reverse the decryption operation is like uh, D is the decryption function, parameters to the decryption function is C and KD, C means the ciphertext and KD is the decryption key and as a result of this function we get M value or the plain message, message back. Okay, having these things in your mind, let's uh, move on. Uh, in uh, So this is kind of discussion like the methods of cryptanalysis, when we have the cryptanalysis, so how to break the ciphers we need to consider that what are the resources available to the adversary adversary is the term we used for the attacker in in in, in, the, in the crypto cryptology uh, context we use this word adversary the person who is going to attack the system crypto system uh, so resources we say like computational power computational power and the other thing is access to various inputs and outputs. What are the data or the what are the information available to the attacker or the adversary? Some cipher text or maybe some uh, plain text or some previous keys. Uh, likewise, some information. What are the additional information he has? And computational power. What is the computational power uh, the adversary has? Normally, we say uh, adversary is a probabilistic polynomial time machine so that means we we cover any uh, currently available or currently existing supercomputer probabilistic polynomial time adversary that means uh, that's a term we use in cryptology uh, any supercomputer we have is probabilistic polynomial time it can solve any probabilistic polynomial time uh, problem any like uh, problem that can be solved in probabilistic polynomial time and some problems there are they are uh, they need 
exponential time. So we we say like our computers are uh, not capable of uh, solving those problems efficiently. Okay, so keep that aside for a bit. So we have to consider the resources, mainly the computational power and access to various uh, inputs and outputs. And the, what is the aim of that research? That is again uh, very important when we uh, talk about attacker model. So aim is uh, the what is the adversary? What is he going to do? So maybe he is going to reveal or uh, the, get the whole secret key. Sometimes uh, he is going to uh, uh, just decrypt the message, or sometimes he is going to decrypt or not uh, not decrypt even distinguish the real plain text from uh, a random plain text so when the cipher text is given adversary is trying to distinguish cipher text and the, the the real plain text for that cipher text and a random plain text is given those three things the cipher text real plain text of that cipher text and a random uh, plain text those three things are given adversary task is to identify which one is the real plain text and which one is the uh, random plain text so just a distinguishing so in that case uh, we know adversary is uh, succeeding uh, 50 percent uh, adversary has 50 percent chance of succeeding but that is not efficient or we can't consider that adversary is sub, uh, sufficient uh, or working because uh, anybody can any blind person can uh, win the, this challenge in 50 percent chance so adversary should have a sig uh, significant uh, uh, advantage of uh, winning this game if adversary is uh, properly working so that's one one way and maybe adversary's uh, target is to uh, when the cipher text is given adversary's target is to reveal the plain text particular to that cipher text or, or the even harder task adversary is going to reveal the key so then adversary can get uh, any plain text from any cipher text so the goal of the adversary and the, the, the resources available to the adversary so we have to consider these things uh, when we model an adversarial model for a uh, cryptographic scheme to analyze the cryptographic scheme so these are some uh, some basic and some kind of advanced stuff we are talking uh, for the time being uh, know that when we are talking about crypt analysis and when we are talking about uh, adversarial models we have to consider uh, the resources available to the adversary and the aim of the adversary what the adversary is going to do okay and uh, we know that exhaustive key search is there. The modern, uh, the most basic method of attack is exhaustive key search. When you are given a cipher text, and uh, then you can try all possible keys for the cipher text against cipher text and try to get a plain text message. So that is called a brute force attack as well. So this is most basic method we anyone can do that given that he has uh, sufficient computational power he can do this so sometimes he he may have to do this for many years hundred years thousand years maybe so adversary tries all possible keys so we cannot prevent this attack this is natural thing when the cipher text is available and when the adversary knows the algorithm then uh, he can he can do exhaustive research we can't prevent the only thing we can do is make it impossible to solve this problem in a probabilistic polynomial time that means uh, using whatever the supercomputer we have yeah. in the current day we make uh, this task exhaustive thing for that computer so having a very very big lengthy key we can do that so all crypto systems must have enough keys to make exhaustive key search too difficult computationally. So having a key very very large, we can somewhat prevent this attack. Even with supercomputers, adversaries 
not capable of doing this an adversary can find the key without uh, trying exhaustive key search using any other method he can do an adversary may be able to break the crypto system without finding the key so that is also possible without finding the key adversary can break the crypto system just by distinguishing when the random ciphertext and real ciphertext is available he can distinguish and break the ciphertext according to the attacker model adversary model and also uh, without uh, finding the key he can uh, decrypt a particular ciphertext and get the plain text message only for that but still we consider it as a breaking the crypto system therefore prevention of exhaustive key search is only a minimum standard so minimum standard is to prevent the exhaustive key search but there are other possibilities adversary can find the key without trying exhaustive key search and adversary may be able to break the crypto system without finding the key so these are other things so therefore prevention of exhaustive key search or brute force is only a minimum standard so this is another important thing you have to know uh, attack classifications so there are four classifications of attacks one is called uh, ciphertext only attack the ciphertext the, the, the cryptanalysis or the, the breaker the hacker the code breaker has available only the uh, intercepted ciphertext so that means we have a secure crypto system uh, not me i mean secure crypto system and attacker has only the ciphertext not other information only the ciphertext generated by the system so only ciphertext is available attacker is trying to uh, break the system break in terms of uh, let's say uh, getting the decryption of the ciphertext or maybe break in terms of uh, uh, distinguishing the real ciphertext real plain text of that ciphertext from a random plain text so breaking means uh, there are many means for breaking uh, but the only information available to the attack is ciphertext, ciphertext only attack. And non plain text attack, that means the cryptanalyst or the code breaker knows a small amount of plain text and its ciphertext equivalence. So he knows some plain text and ciphertexts generated from that crypto system. And then he is given a new ciphertext and ask the plain text of that ciphertext something like that or maybe ask to distinguish uh, from a random ciphertext a random plain text so no known plain text some plain text are known and uh, its uh, corresponding ciphertext are also known that information is available to the attacker so like uh, you know the, the past paper questions and answers similar to that and in some exam the, 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 the current exam you will be given a new question and you will be asked to solve that question problem so but you know the questions and answers of past years so that is similar to non plain text attack and chosen plain text attack chosen plain text attack means the cryptanalysis or the, the, the hacker can obtain the ciphertext equivalent of some plain text which can be selected by the attacker so attacker can say like i want the ciphertext of this plain text this plain text likewise he can choose some plain text he can like generate or guess some plain text any any text and ask the crypto system to give the ciphertext or encrypt them and give the ciphertext and then he knows some information according to uh, his wish so the attacker has an inside encryptor available so this is some uh, the attacker can be like attack is equipped with some uh, some good knowledge attacker has an inside encryptor available so using that inside encryptor that means let's say some inside person of some in some organization who is helping the attacker to break that crypto system something like that so for example I can say uh, saying like taking the example of 
the exam questions and uh, answers so when you are preparing to sit for an exam you can you can choose some uh, questions by yourself and ask somebody to solve them and give the answers to you and based on that knowledge uh, you study for the exam something like that and the fourth category is chosen ciphertext attack so the cryptanalysis can obtain the plain text equivalent of some ciphertext which can be selected by the attack so this is uh, some more thing like when the attacker the attacker is uh, seeing some ciphertext then attacker can uh, get the decryption of those ciphertext uh, from the system the reverse way the, 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 the earlier way is getting the encryptions of some ciphertext but here the decryptions of some encryptions of some plain text the, the category 3 and the category 4 decryptions of some uh, ciphertext the attacker has an inside decryptor available so this is uh, this means little bit more stronger than the uh, attacker we mentioned here uh, not the stronger means the attacker has some more information in this uh, category 4 uh, you will understand this in terms of information more information uh, when we talk about uh, public key cryptography so the thing is here in uh, the chosen plain text attack attacker can choose only the plain text and get the ciphertext but uh, here attacker is getting some ciphertext which are generated by the uh, maybe the attacker or maybe like randomly chosen by the attacker or generated by the system and get decryption of those things so decryption uh, that means attacker has the access to the decryption operation as well okay so to make this more uh, clear you have to read some text in internet then you will be able to uh, understand this better so for the time being uh, I emphasize that uh, you should know that there are four categories of attacker models ciphertext only known plain text chosen plain text and chosen ciphertext attack and when we consider these things here the ciphertext only attack means the attackers target or the attackers task is uh, difficult because attacker has less information but when we come to the fourth category attackers task can be uh, easy because attacker has more information more information is given to the attacker here less information is given to the attacker so when we talk about a crypto system uh, we most of the time we focus on attacker model in the category 4 or maybe category 3 because we say like we give more information to the attacker and still the attacker cannot break the system that means we can have a high guarantee about the security of this system so attacker is a probabilistic polynomial time machine or algorithm and uh, so the, the the power of the attacker is the same the information for the attacker is less in the case one uh, high in the case four and when we can claim that uh, even though more information is given to the attacker attacker cannot break our system that means our our cryptographic design or the algorithm can be uh, considered as a secure one so we tend to uh, use category 3 or category 4 to analyze crypto systems in modern modern day okay security of uh, crypto systems that is crypto uh, crypto systems which can be attacked using ciphertext is highly insecure so I discussed that the information given to the attacker is very low and even the information is given to the attacker is very low if the attacker can break the system that means the, 
the, the cryptographic scheme is highly insecure. In modern standards, that a crypto system should be secure against CPA or CCA. CPA means uh, this category 3, CPA, and CCA means category 4. Okay. Having that in mind, uh, you have to uh, uh, know about this Kirch of principle. Kirch of principle, the idea is the cryptanalysis has complete knowledge of the cipher. And the decryption key is the only thing unknown to the cryptanalysis. In uh, symmetric key ciphers, uh, the key is the only unknown thing to the cryptanalysis. That means decryption and encryption key are the, both are the same. But in public key cryptographic algorithms, only the decryption key is unavailable to the uh, attacker. But attacker completely know the algorithm that is used to encrypt messages and decrypt messages. The way how it to process he knows but only the unavailable thing is decryption key. History has shown that Kirch of principle is a reasonable assumption. That's because uh, in the last lecture we have discussed about uh, Enigma machine and several other crypto systems uh, used by Germans and which are uh, broken by Polish and British. Uh, that means uh, even though they make the system, the, the algorithm uh, hidden to the attacker, somehow the attacker can find that uh, the, the inside uh, the process of the algorithm. Once that, once that thing is uh, found out, uh, we can say if the, if the system is broken, then it's a problem. So we can assume that attacker knows uh, uh, everything. Everything means the, the about the algorithm. Only hidden thing is the key. So although the attacker can find out the algorithm, still he cannot break the thing because he doesn't know the secret key. And in modern day, all the algorithms we use are publicly available in our the, like the algorithm. The cryptographic algorithm we use for internet communication or telecommunication or uh, in an, any electronic devices those are publicly available algorithms only the secret key is the unknown thing so this means uh, we have uh, we, are, we are not going to going for a uh, like uh, very strong assumption we are still thinking like we are we are not like kind of having uh, overestimation about our system. We are not thinking like our system is uh, unknown to the world. We think that our system is known to the world. Uh, world knows how the things things are happening, but secret key is the thing we are going to uh, make the entire system secure. So evolutions of ciphers. Uh, ciphers have been used over 2000 years and prior to, uh, 1970 they were mainly used in military uh, circles that means uh, military purposes and the ciphers which are used in modern times were developed from the old old systems cryptanalysis methods have also evolved over this time period from prehistoric time to uh, the modern time in order to understand modern methods for both designing and attacking ciphers, it is important to have a historical understanding about classical ciphers. That's why I'm uh, taking this topic for you, uh, this lecture. And you can see a lot of uh, information about, you can read uh, about historical aspects of cryptography from this book, The Code Breakers by David Kahn. And you can also uh, see some uh, documentaries about that Enigma machine and how the things happen in the, the World War time. Uh, they are very interesting and you can know a lot of information regarding them. So if you have time, uh, try to read this information and see the documentaries from internet. You can understand a lot. Okay. And uh, so these are the basic cipher operations, even though in the the historical time and even in modern world we have only these two operations in our ciphers so
So the first operation is uh, transposition. The characters in uh, plain text are mixed up with each other using the permutation uh, principles. And substitution, each character or set of characters is replaced by different characters or set of different characters. So these are the two operations we use in cryptography, transposition and substitution. So uh, this is a simple, uh, the most simple thing, this, uh, the, the simple substitution or monoalphabetic cipher. Uh, so that means each character in the plain text alphabet is replaced by a character in the ciphertext alphabet as defined by substitution table. This is, uh, the, the Caesar cipher is a simple uh, substitution cipher uh, using monoalphabetic uh, way. The substitution table can be denoted by a function uh, f such that c equals f of p C means the ciphertext equals F means the function of P is the plain text. Example, N is the number of characters in the alphabet. Let's say N equals 27 according to the English alphabet. When you have the C as a cipher, encryption is CI equals AI plus J mod N. So mod N means when we have the character Z that is going back to A, B, C, something like that. He said we'll map with B. That's why we have to use mod N. So there are only the set of 27 characters or N number of characters in the alphabet. And the decryption is AI, that means the, the, the plain text character is going to be CI, the ciphertext uh, the, the character value minus J mod N. And we have linear cipher. Linear cipher is something like a uh, little bit different, but still uh, it is linear and coming with the, the, the same thing. So J will be AI plus B multiplied by some number and plus some number. It will map to a character in the alphabet. And this is the inverse. Uh, so this is about uh, simple substitution cipher, Caesar cipher style or linear cipher times plus something, A times plus B. And random substitution cipher that is uh, like uh, not saying uh, the each, each character is going to be shifted three times or four times or likewise. We say we have a, a table that randomly maps plain text character to a ciphertext character. So the key is this substitution table, random ciphertext, random uh, simple substitution cipher. So uh, whatever the method we use, when we have a monoalphabetic simple substitution, we can easily break that. Following the statistics, uh, give a typical distribution of uh, English text, particular distribution was calculated on a text uh, passage of this number of characters uh, we can easily break this cipher any any cipher simple substitution cipher uh, using mono alphabet i think you you have read the sherlock holmes story about uh, the, the the dancing characters symbols of dancers so there they have used a simple substitution cipher and uh, Sherlock Holmes knew how to break this cipher using this principle. The typical English character has a uh, English uh, text has some uh, characteristic. That means highest uh, frequent character is space and then E, then N and T likewise. These are the, he knows the number of uh, like the character frequencies in natural English text. Using that, so all the characters in our uh, cipher text are replaced by some other, uh, like all the plain, all the characters in our plain text uh, are replaced by some uh, uh, characters in our uh, cipher text uh, alphabet. So E will be replaced by some other value, let's say S then instead of E, 
the frequency of s is going to be high instead of n frequency of uh, the character that is going to replace n will be high so because of that we can easily uh, find out what are the what is the the key used for this cipher uh, this uh, system uh, the crypto system so easily break the system using that analysis and the statistical attacks on simple uh, substitution cipher that is what i uh, discussed uh, statistical attacks depends on usually uh, the redundancy of uh, plain text in written text considerable amount of information is available from the distribution of letters single letters or sometimes diagram that means uh, uh, the combination of two letters uh, the frequency of occurring combination of two letters in natural english will be replaced by some other pattern in our um, ciphertext and trigrams as well so analyzing these things we can easily uh, break the code statistical attacks on simple substitution cipher the c cipher or linear cipher random substitution cipher they are the same you can easily do that okay and transposition cipher that means a substitution uh, the simple transposition cipher permutes characters in a fixed period and permutation so let's say when we have a text we break it into uh, four character uh, paths and characters in this uh, four character portions will be permuted so each block of d characters are recognized uh, using the permutation of a for example we can say we have plain text value cryptography 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so this this plain text has 12 letters and we break it into uh, four letter portions and these four letter portions we do permutation p will be coming to the fourth position will be coming to the first position uh, first position will be coming to the second position second position will be coming to the third position the third position will be coming to the fourth position so likewise so the period is d the period d is 4 here and the permutation is f the function is 4 the fourth character will be in the first place first character will be in the second place uh, second character will be in the third place and third character will be in the fourth place and this will be the uh, reverse or the decryption if inverse is 2 3 4 1 how to uh, replace things back okay so cryptanalyzing the simple transposition cipher it is uh, distribution of characters in uh, in the cipher text is same as the plain text so we can easily identify when a text is given just using the the histogram of the characters we can identify whether this is going to be a simple uh, substitution cipher or a uh, simple transposition cipher if this is a simple substitution cipher uh, the character frequencies are different like e will be replaced by the the highest frequency is normally e in in uh, natural english but it will be replaced by some other character in uh, in a, in a simple substitution cipher but if it is a simple uh, transposition cipher character frequencies are uh, the same because we are not replacing the characters by some other characters we are just uh, mixing them up so this helps to identify transposition cipher from a simple uh, substitution cipher and use the process of anagramming uh, that means restoring the disjoint characters to their original positions knowledge of the plain text language is needed so if we know the plain text language if we can guess that if it is english or single or whatever then we can try uh, to find the uh, period so let's say this is the cipher text and then what we do is we try spell uh, splitting this into two blocks okay try to split this into two blocks and uh, try whether this is going to uh, give some meaningful uh, message if not we try to split the ciphertext into 
three uh, blocks then try to uh, find meaningful words there if not try with four and try to uh, find meaningful words and then if we can find a meaningful word in many places that means we can find the pattern how the things will be uh, reversed and then we can easily uh, decrypt the text so that's the idea and uh, then we have polyalphabetic su substitution ciphers earlier we had uh, the simple substitution cipher monoalphabetic just one alphabet is used but here we use multiple mapping from plain text to cipher text to smooth the frequency distribution so direct frequency analysis is no longer effective so this will smooth the distribution so just by doing a simple uh, histogram we cannot identify this this will smooth the character frequencies so poly polyalphabetic ciphers are periodic substitution ciphers based on a period and d for example we can see like this a random polyalphabetic substitution cipher so when we have this uh, what we do is first we uh, choose a period like this and so that there are three cipher text alphabets so if this is the plain text if this is uh, place one if a is in place one it will be substituted by u if a is in place two it will be substituted by place uh, by character uh, q if a is in uh, place three it will be substituted by character m for example this is a message plain text message is it is a beautiful 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 so if we have this as the plain text what we do is first we divide the periods three character periods i t space i s space a space b e a u uh, and t i f so if this is the key i will be replaced by z okay t is the second character so t uh, t will be replaced by g space is the third character so space is going to be replaced by s so the finally we have z g s as the ciphertext value for this portion is i will be replaced by z because it is from the first place s will be replaced by uh, f and space will be replaced by s likewise so you can see here is i will be replaced by z but here i will be replaced by n so that will smoothen the uh, character frequencies you cannot simply do uh, histogram analysis and find out this but still uh, there are ways to do the cryptanalysis cryptanalysis of periodic uh, substitution cipher the the first thing is to the, the, the code break or the hacker has to determine the first uh, the, 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 the period what is the period then each cipher alphabet is separately analyzed for a simple substitution cipher for example if this is the plain text sorry the cipher text there are two occurrences of F C U J H A we can identify that by looking this so 12 characters apart 12 characters apart starting from here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so we have 12 characters apart there are uh, two occurrences of this uh, set of characters this suggests period can be 1 2 3 4 6 or 12 period can be uh, a divisor of 12
having that knowledge we can try these periods separately using uh, simple substitutions again if there are many occurrences then then look at the look at how many characters apart and then uh, look the common devices of that numbers that's the way uh, and also we have uh, use of data compression so in above situations we saw that redundancy in natural language helps to cryptanalysis so therefore it is advised to remove the redundancies as much as possible before encryption so data compression is usually applied uh, before encryption so data compression can be used as a side channel to uh, do attacks we will discuss that later I also have done some research about uh, compression based attacks uh, on uh, ciphertext uh, and this is a concept a perfect secrecy attack against no information about the plain text from observing the ciphertext but in earlier cases, the earlier ciphers, historical ciphers, or the classical ciphers we have seen, attacker got some information about the, the, the plain text just by looking at the cipher, cipher text. So the, in perfect secrecy, in the modern cryptography, uh, we need pre perfect secrecy in our cipher texts. Otherwise, it, it, they can be easily uh, broken. So attack against no information about the plain text from observing the ciphertext. So ciphertext should look completely random thing. No gist about the plain text. One time pad provides perfect secrecy. A particular key is used uh, one time pad or the, the one time only. Uh, you can you can little bit read about one time pad. That means a key is used just for one time. That means uh, when we have a plain text character, it will be XORed with some ciphertext value and get the, uh, the plain text value. So key stream is random binary sequence. So this is like if you have this text as the plain text, so this will be uh, replaced by some value like let's say like position of a is the, the value 1 it will be replaced to position s by having that cipher uh, the, the key value and this value the the t value will be replaced by some other thing it will never have a pattern with the previous thing so this is a random stream bit stream and using that ciphertext is generated so one time pro uh, pad provides perfect secrecy because it is just a sequence of uh, uh, characters, a sequence of uh, bits uh, and it is not occurring over and over, looking very random. So that's why it is called one time pad. Uh, so let's uh, talk about the idea of one time pad and uh, how the uh, stream ciphers came into the picture in modern cryptography using the idea of one time pad. So uh, as a homework, uh, while studying these things, read some little more information about one time pads. Thank you.